Hey guys, back again with another video, a review on Metroid Prime 2. This is the game that won the vote for uh, my pick my next review uh, episode that I had uh, a while back. And yeah, uh, 17 hours later, uh, I finished the game and man, this game, I I'm so conflicted on this game. Uh, because Basically, I, I feel this game is inferior to the first game in pretty much every way. There are a lot of sections of this game that frustrated me to no end. Uh, it, this is like the most frustrated I've been with a video game uh, at times. But the game is also quite enjoyable. Uh, I won't deny that most of my time I spent with this game, I you know, I, I was enjoying it. I, I, I think the game is still good. It's just highly flawed, and we'll we'll get to those flaws. I I think it's still worth playing, if if you're a fan of of the series and you for whatever reason haven't played this game. But I can't help but feel disappointed, uh, seeing as that uh, Metroid Prime, the first one is my favorite Metroid game. I thought that game was amazing, uh, but uh, th this game just is kind of disappointing because I I think it's kind of a a poor sequel. But at the same time, it's still a decent game. I feel like I, I think there's enough there's enough to enjoy here that it's it's worth playing. But uh, we'll we'll get into that uh, why this game pissed me off. But um, we'll start with the story. Like with Metroid Prime, it's it's got more of a story focus than the old school Metroid games. But it's not it's the, like the the focus on story is a little more prominent here than in Metroid Prime because there's more cutscenes. Uh, but basically what the story is, is Samus kind of has to investigate this planet called Aether. I, I think that's how you pronounce it, I don't know, Aether, a e Aether, a e Aether, whatever. Um, you investigate this planet, you find this like uh, alien species called the Luminoth, which are actually, they're actually good. Uh, they're, they're not evil, and they're, they're not an evil alien species, but uh, you, you encounter them and they, they tell you that this, uh, this meteor, this Phazon meteor crashed on this planet creating this alternate dimension, a dark world of sorts, uh, called Dark Aether, basically. And uh, this other alien species called the Ing, basically, uh, grew to um, kind of live in this alternate dimension and then kind of... Uh, kind of uh, get into they kind of get into the the light world part and basically the, these this alien species the ing uh, wants to destroy the luminoth uh, they're like a, this evil species and basically you have to basically get rid of the the ing that's that's the general plot uh, you find uh, a bunch of lore uh, to do with like the luminoth and the ing and like how this how this like alternate dimension came to be uh, how like there like there's this like a battle that kind of happened before b between space marines and space pirates and you kind of f find out how that happened uh, and and you know and it's you know you you're scanning things in the environment to kind of get story details but I, one of the weird things with this game is the fact that uh, these these Luminoth, this one Luminoth that you find, will actually talk to you. Uh, there's actual actual dialogue and cutscenes. Uh, it, it's it's kind of strange. I don't know. It's I, it, it's weird. I guess from Metroid coming from Metroid Prime, but I, I found like the story was a little less confusing here. I mean, it's it's still simplistic, but Metroid Prime, I was kind of confused and that's mainly because I didn't do a whole lot of scanning in that game and I didn't I did more of it in this game but I still I, I don't really like scanning all that much scanning everything I know to 100% the game you pretty much have to scan everything you come across like I just don't find that fun it's just kind of irritating to me to have to scan every single thing in the environment but yeah like with Metroid Prime the story is not not great uh you know the metroid games are aren't really known for their evolving stories and that and that's the case here i mean it has a little bit of more of a focus considering there's like a, a few more cutscenes, but it, it never gets in the way uh it, it's it never interrupts you all that much it's not like other m which apparently was a disaster uh, in that regard but um yeah it, it's not it's not the reason you're going to play this game uh, that's for sure uh but let's talk about gameplay now uh the, the meat and potatoes of this game and where it pissed me off the most, um, it's it's very similar to the first one. It plays very very similar to the first one, where it's in a first person perspective. Now, I did play on the Wii, so you have kind of motion controls where you can kind of lock on to your enemies, but you can also aim uh, aim in the lock on area. 
uh, to kind of uh, have more accurate shots. And then you can just do a manual aim with the Wiimote too, which uh, I like. I, I like the Wii controls in this game. Uh, I, I think they, they control quite well. It, my hand tends to, my wrist starts to cramp up after a while, so it's a game I could only play in short bursts, like two to three hours at a time. But uh, the aiming controls kind of work well. Uh, you can shoot while you jump, while you jump, which I, from what I remember, I don't think you can do that in the GameCube one. Although in Me Metroid Prime Two, maybe you might have been able to. I, I, I don't. I haven't looked too much into that. Uh, you know, like the control differences. But uh, if the Wii version is the only one you can play, uh, it, it does control well here. It makes things easier too, actually, uh, just because you have more accuracy. And there's a lot of boss battles in this game where you need pretty good accuracy. Uh, I would imagine on the GameCube version, it would kind of be a pain in the ass in some parts. But the combat, you're you know you're locking on enemies. You've got like a dodge that you can kind of do, you can dodge like from left to right and back, you can jump, you can space jump, uh, you'll get all these different abilities throughout the game. Uh, later you can even get a screw attack ability where it's kind of like, um, it allows you to cover large distances, so if you jump, do the space jump, which is your double jump, and then immediately after that, press uh, the, I think it's the B button, um, you'll do like, you'll get into your spin attack mode, and then you can like time it, so you can do like, uh, multiple jumps after that, uh, so you can kind of cover large gaps. Um, you can, uh, you, there's more ball sections like Metroid Prime where it t turns into third person and you, you know, you're you rolling this ball along with the analog stick. Uh, it, you can get a boost for that too. Uh, you can lay bombs uh, with, with uh, you know, with the one of the buttons. I mean, it's, it's essentially the 2D Metroid games transferred into 3D and it really works well. It's it's like with Metroid Prime, this game is incredibly immersive. I find like it it's more immersive in the first person perspective uh, compared to like the 2D Metroid games. And there's like all these cool little details like if um like if you shoot something in the uh, like your charge beam bounces off something, uh, you'll see Samus's kind of like reflection in the visor, uh, which is like this cool little touch. Uh, you know, they, like, of course, scanning everything, you have different scan visor modes that you can activate. I mean, it, it generally controls and plays the same as Metroid Prime 1. Uh, the combat is pretty fun. It's not the best ever, but I, I actually probably prefer it to the combat in in the 2D games, because I, I just like having, you know, a, a 3D space for you to, to move around in. And it, the enemies have all sorts of different patterns. Um, it, it's still got the, uh, that annoying thing from Metroid Prime 1 where a lot of times it, when you're backtracking through these environments, enemies will spawn in and the doors that you need to progress to the next area will lock until you've killed the enemies in the room you're in. Now, it doesn't do this all the time, but sometimes it does. And that, that can be a little frustrating. And it's one of those things where uh, later in the game, once you, when you're backtracking through areas where you've already been and there's enemies... All the like pretty much every time I'm I'm just like okay I don't want to fight these guys I'm just running past all of them because uh, just it just it just feels like a, a waste of time to me so it still got that problem from the first game but um, it generally plays the same I guess I should talk about the differences uh, and the big difference is the dark world uh, like I mentioned in the, in the story section uh, it very very much inspired by Zelda Link to the Past but I feel like it's not implemented near as well uh, as in that game. So basically, you find these portals throughout the environment uh, in the light world uh, of Aether, and you go into these dark world portals, and now you're in like this new dimension, but generally you're in the exact same environments you were in. They have minor differences, uh, and you might do something in the dark world that will change something in the light world. But I was surprised at how like they, they didn't use this too much. Like, there's a few puzzles where you might do something in the dark world and it will change something in the light world but it's it doesn't happen as as often as you would think uh, they don't get as clever as you would expect uh, with, with that concept uh, but with the dark world the environment is pretty much the exact same the color palette is changed everything's like bluish purple and there's now a poisonous environment where your health slowly drains and this is the thing that turned me off of the game when I first played it all, all those years ago back on the GameCube um, and luckily I was able to get into the game this time. It wasn't as big as a, 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 as big of a deal this time, but it's, it's still annoying. Uh, it still makes exploration uh, a bit of a bitch, especially in the early game. And I feel it kind of acti actively discourages it, where you kind of feel like rushing through the Dark World as fast as you can. 
Uh, but at the same time, you can't, because you act you have to find all these keys. And I'll talk about the structure of the game a little bit later, but uh, for now, we'll, we'll stick with the Dark World here. So, in the beginning of the game, this the Dark World damages you so fast. It's ridiculous. And the, they you, you basically, so that you don't die, they give you these, these health points, like these kind of crystals that you shoot. Uh, some of them you shoot, some of them are static where they kind of have like these orbs surrounding them and if you're in if you're standing in this area your heat your health will slowly regenerate uh, so you're kind of moving from these like choke points basically uh, like these checkpoints uh, through the dark world and in the beginning the 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 environment damages you so quickly and these health things heal you so slowly that it's such it, it becomes a pain in the ass to explore right in the beginning I was like, right off the bat, I was like, oh, this sucks. This is terrible. And it was frustrating. I was very frustrated with it at first. Uh, and it's you don't get a whole lot of energy tanks in the beginning. Energy tanks uh, give you more maximum HP. Uh, but luckily, eventually, and it actually doesn't take too long, you will get a suit that reduces the amount of damage the environment does to you. Uh, and it will basically hurt you for as much as the, the healing spots heal you for. And then exploration is not as bad. Then it didn't. I didn't mind it so much. It still wasn't what I would call enjoyable, and I don't. I, I don't know. Like it adds, this, I guess, a sense of danger. But I, I never felt like once I got that suit, I never felt like I was in danger of dying. Uh, but when you were in danger of dying, it's just kind of annoying, right? It's it's not. It's just not fun. Um, and eventually, later in the game, you do get a suit that makes you immune to the dark world. But uh, that comes very late. But. Uh, so now let's talk about the structure of the game and basically you kind of have like a, a hub world called like the temple grounds and you have different environments that connect uh, to this temple to this temple grounds area uh, you have the Torvis bog uh, the Aegon wastes and then the sanctuary fortress and basically you, you basically the structure of the game works like this where you go to the temple grounds then you'll go to the Aegon wastes this is this is your first area of the game uh, you'll explore the light world there for a bit, kind of like uh, charting out your map, uh, and then you'll eventually get to the this energy controller uh, where the Luminoth are, and they'll basically tell you that oh, in this area, the Aegon Waste, go to the Dark World here and find three keys, and then go to the Dark Temple in the Dark World of the Aegon Waste and use those three keys uh, to get to the energy co to controller and restore that energy to the light world. So you're gonna, from that point, you're gonna go to the dark world, you're gonna find the three keys, which can be anywhere, and to get a lot of them, you're gonna get, have to get a new ability somewhere. Uh, and you're always unlocking new abilities, and, and you'll have to backtrack to previous areas to get uh, older abilities, and then go all the way back to other areas. So you'll find these three keys, uh, and it, sometimes it can take a while, and they're kinda, man, some of them are really well hidden. Uh, I had to use a walkthrough for a couple of them, but you find the three keys, then you go to the Dark Temple in the Dark World of the Aegon Wastes, you'll fight a boss, then you'll get to the Energy Controller, you'll get the energy there, then you've got to go back to the Light World, go back to the Luminoth uh, in the Light World, return the energy there, and then you'll, you'll unlock the path to the next area, uh, the Torvis Bog. And then you'll go to the Torvis Bog, and you'll do the same thing, you get another three keys. So it's... It's a structure that basically makes it so that you have to backtrack through environments a lot. Now, I I don't know, I, like, I feel like there probably is more backtracking in this game overall than Metroid Prime 1, and that had a lot of backtracking too, and it's mostly because of the Dark World. You'll constantly be going through these portals, in and out, in and out, uh, watching these portal cutscenes, going back and forth between the two areas, that it gets... It, it gets pretty tedious, I'm not gonna lie, it can get really tedious, and then going to these energy controllers back and forth, getting the three keys, going through these environments you've already been, it's, you know what, there probably is more backtracking than the first game. Now, luckily, uh, it's alleviated a bit by uh, the fact that there's elevators that will connect the areas, like, uh, there'll be an elevator connecting Torvis Bog to Sanctuary Fortress, Sanctuary Fortress to Aegon Waste, and, and vice versa, which, that, that's a good thing. That uh, definitely cuts down on the on the potential backtracking, but it, it's still a pain in the ass, especially in the late game, when they they do the... They pulled the, they pulled the same shit they did with the original game. Now, the original game has this fetch quest towards the end, where you have to find a bunch of... Uh, they're pretty much keys to, to access the final boss, basically. 
and you have to you have to scour these environments that you've already been to, to and you, you get these very cryptic hints where these things could be so you almost you have to resort to a walkthrough and it was one of the main complaints with the first game uh, if there's anything that people complain about with Metroid Prime it was that and they brought it back from Metroid Prime 2 uh, they brought it back and now I felt like it probably didn't take as long I, I don't know why that is maybe because I used a walkthrough for every single one of them but um, yeah, uh, towards the very end, you got to get, I think it's just like nine of these keys that are all throughout the environments, uh, which that's pretty frustrating. That, that It's just padding. Like, it, I don't think it really adds, enough, adds anything to the game. Uh, you know, it can be fun to revisit previous areas with your abilities and get like a missile expansion or like an energy tank, and I, I, I got all the energy tanks. Uh, but I, I had to get these keys, it was just kind of annoying. Um, so that added like an extra like hour to the game <laughs> that didn't really need to be there. And overall, the game is longer than Metroid Prime uh, because of all this dark world back and forth and the, and the backtracking and the keys that you have to get. Uh, even though there's not that many locations, there, there really isn't. Uh, but it, it took me 17 hours to finish, so I mean, and that's compared to 13 for Metroid Prime. So yeah, it's a, definitely a, a longer game. So, the, yeah, the structure of the game is a little... I, I don't mind it too much, but I, I think the keys, like the three keys, they kind of cut all that stuff out and, and replace it with something else. I, I don't know exactly what they what they should have done there. Now, not to say there are that the, like, the level design is bad in this game, because the level design overall in this game is actually quite good, uh, it can, all, all things considered. Uh, it, it's about as good as the first game, I, I would say. Maybe, maybe a little worse... Uh, there are some clever little puzzles uh, with, with the dark world and, and the light world. Uh, exploring these environments is still really rewarding. It's really fun. Uh, it's, always, uh, it's always great when you find a new power-up uh, with, with your new skills. Um, and, yeah, it, it's like the, the level design is overall quite good, especially the Sanctuary Fortress at, at the end. Uh, it's the very last location you go to. It's to, visually, it's very striking, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool puzzles and, and enemies there to, to fight. Um, the enemy design in general is is pretty strong too. I, I there's there's a there's a lot of cool enemies, but um, okay, we'll 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 start talking about the frustrating parts of this game, the the parts that really pissed me off. Okay, so there's there's two things. First, I, I'll I'll talk about the bosses now. Metro Prime 1 had a decent array of bosses. Now, they weren't amazing. I didn't think any of the bosses in the first game were amazing, but they were all decent to good. I didn't think any of them... I think the final boss was the only one I didn't like. Metroid Prime 2, on the other hand, uh, off the top of my head, there is maybe three bosses. There's three bosses in this entire game that I liked. Well, four. One of them was okay. A couple of them were okay, but there's only really three that I liked. And, yeah, that's that's a big problem. Uh, there's quite a few bosses in this game, and they're all fucking garbage. Like, so, so far inferior to the ones in Metroid Prime. And I gotta talk about a few of them here. Now, I'll start with the positive. One of the bosses I liked, um, the first one is Dark Samus. And you're, you'll encounter Dark Samus uh, multiple times throughout the game. And it's always just like this one-on-one -on -one fight. Uh, there's always, you can always, always easily hit her. She almost never has invertibility periods. Uh, it's a very fast fight. Uh, dodging left and right behind all these pillars. Dodging her attacks. Popping out and, and charging up your beams and, and, and shooting, shooting Samus. Uh, those are, are really fun fights. Uh, then you have Quadraxis, which is kind of like this giant mech boss uh, way later in the game. Uh, many different in interesting phases with that boss, uh, very interesting ways to get your health back throughout that fight, uh, and it really tested your abilities uh, that you kind of got. So that was a fun fight, I liked that. Maybe a little long, and the bosses in general are way too long in this game, like they just take way too much, uh, they're, they're bullet sponges basically. Uh, but a Quadraxis I liked, probably my favorite boss in the game. Uh, and then the final boss, surprisingly, is good. Uh, usually, I don't like final bosses in games. I feel like final bosses are always frustrating, but in this game, the final boss was intense, multiple forms. Uh, it was always fun to figure out, and then you had a very intense uh, time battle of sorts at the end. But um, and that it really tested your abilities too. But uh, the final boss I enjoyed. But uh, yeah, that's it. The rest of the bosses. Let's let's talk about the terrible bosses and. Uh, the Morph Ball in general. Let's talk about the Morph Ball, actually, because the, the, the developers of this game were are obsessed with the Morph Ball. I swear, almost half of this game, I felt, 
uh, and it was like morph ball sections where you you have to like follow along these tracks and do like these obstacle courses with your morph ball and like some of them are cool but I found it just got really old like by the end of the game anytime a morph ball section come, came up I was like oh not again like it's just there's so much of it uh, and they'll even have bosses in these morph ball sections and uh, two of them, actually, and they're both incredibly annoying, but we'll talk about one of them, and that's the Spider Guardian. Now, this boss is, uh, now I'm not, I'm serious here, probably the worst boss I've ever fought in a video game. I, I'm, I'm not even kidding there. Like, it is fucking infuriating. I almost quit the game because of this shit, because uh, I died the first time. Luckily, I got him the second time, but you basically, this boss, you kind of follow him along this, this kind of, like, obstacle course type track right and you kind of have to lay bombs uh, in his path and you have to like hit him like four times in a row until he gets into this mode where he's like flashing green and then you gotta get your orb into the, these little uh, like energy things like the energy platforms or whatever where you kind of get your ball inside them and then you uh, you you lay your bomb in there and you destroy it uh, and then it, you'll like kind of uh, like raise or lower a barrier uh, and then he'll kind of uh, follow this track and get to like this shocking thing that kind of damages him and then you'll move to the next part of the obstacle course so sounds sounds it doesn't sound terrible right but the controls on the morph ball are just not good enough to handle something like this where it's it, it your ball it, it slides so easily off ramps uh, downhill and uphill and there's all these ramps in this obstacle course and to get up to these these bombing points, you have to lay a bomb and, and make it so that it hops you up to to the platform. And uh, I thought that there there was a way to actually jump with the Wii mode. Apparently, so, uh, someone notified me on Twitter that uh, you can shake the Wii mode and he'll have Samus jump in ball form, which would have fixed my complaints. But it worked maybe twenty five percent of the time. I would I would shake the remote. I tried this constantly, and it it would just not work. Uh, it was not reliable enough to use, so I had to resort to just, you know, the old-fashioned way, using bombs to bomb jump. And there's a lot of these sections where you got to bomb jump up to this bomb platform, but it's like on top of a slope that slopes down on both sides, and it's so easy for the morph ball to fall back down. So you fall back down, and then you got to boost your way back up there, and your timing has to be perfect. Because uh, the, the, you have basically a time limit uh, to get to these bombing points before this enemy gets its shield back. The Spider Guardian gets its shield back. And the, the, the later parts of the obstacle course, you have to do three of these bombing platforms in a row in a specific order. And you have almost no time to do this. You're constantly falling off these slopes. You, he's hitting you constantly because it's very hard to dodge him. It is the most frustrating fucking thing I've ever seen in a video game. Like, it is horrendous this boss battle like it just oh I, I can't stress how much I hated this boss battle like it's it's so bad that it like it, it like made me hate the game for a little bit but yeah so you kill that boss and then later you find another fucking morph ball boss where you have to cling to this these tracks and again reach these bomb platforms and this boss is shooting these bombs at you that have like these insane blast radiuses and they're almost impossible to dodge it's like you just have to get lucky like it's and that one was really frustrating too. Uh, you have a bunch of these bosses that have invertibility per periods that last way too long, uh, and, and it just they're long, tedious, drawn out fights that just aren't fun. Uh, the boost guardian, which I heard was really annoying, was actually not that bad, but it took forever and it was not fun at all. So yeah, the bosses are fucking terrible overall, and that was probably the biggest disappointment with this game for me. Like, I thought the Dark World would be my least favorite thing about the game, but no, it's it's the fucking bosses. Um, other other things with the game, you have uh, light and dark beams that you'll get throughout the game, and these have ammo, which again is another complaint I have with the game. I wish they just had an infinite ammo, because you run out of ammo in the early game with these weapons, especially quickly, and there's a lot of enemies that you need to use light and dark beams and like I they're not strong enough so that infinite ammo would make them overpowered and like the the charged up versions like the sunburst and the the dark beam that you can find they're kind of optional power-ups you have to charge charge up your shot and use like a super missile to use those anyways so I don't know I honestly would have preferred if I had infinite ammo like uh, but I don't know maybe maybe that would make things too easy I don't know but it, it was it was kind of annoying I didn't even use them all that much 
Like, if I had to use them, I would use them. But I just stuck to my charge beam because I just hated the fact that I had to use ammo. Uh, and I was always out of ammo, it seemed. Uh, there was just not enough ammo gathering points. So th that's that's another part of the game that I, I feel wasn't implemented that well. There's there's some bosses that make good, good use of it, like the final boss, for instance. But uh, surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of puzzles where you have to use the, the light and dark beam all that much. Uh, but the the puzzles that you generally find that uh, you find are, are generally quite good. And like I said before, the level design is quite good. The game's still kind of quite rewarding, but it's got some frustrating elements, man. Like like the dark world was definitely not to me, in my opinion, wasn't implemented all that well. Um, and yeah, the bosses are definitely the the low point of this game. Um, so yeah, I I come from the gameplay. I come away kind of. Uh, mixed on it because I feel like it's inferior to Metroid Prime in pretty much every way. I, I, in fact, I don't know what this game does better than the first game. I, I, it, I mean, it's probably more challenging overall. Like it's you know the exploration can be a bit more challenging. The puzzles are a bit more challenging, but like I, I think it's just more irritating, really. Uh, and I've heard the Wii version actually toned down the bosses. Apparently, they were harder in the GameCube version, which is fucking. I don't. I don't. That's crazy to me. But uh, yeah. There's there's still a, a lot to like with this game, and if you're a Metroid fan, I think there's enough here that you're you're gonna enjoy it. But just be warned, there's some really frustrating shit in this game, and it, it's it's just kind of a poor sequel, really. Uh, visually, um, it, it looks pretty similar to the first one. It's probably one of the best looking games on the GameCube. On the Wii, I'm not sure, but um, the art design though is actually quite good. Um, the Torvis Bog is, is a little boring. It's kind of your, your, your swamp water type area. But uh, the Sanctuary Fortress, like I mentioned before, looks amazing. It's like this really cool alien fortress. It's, it's hard to describe the look of it, but it, it's really neat. Uh, and there, there's like this great sense of verticality to it uh, and, and to the game in general. Uh, that, that's really quite quite well done. Uh, like I said, there's cool visual effects like Samus's reflection in the visor. Uh, the game's just very immersive because of this this first person viewpoint. But um, yeah, it it still looks pretty decent, you know, for being a, a GameCube game. I mean, it's 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 fairly old at this point, but it, it looks quite good. Uh, I, I you know, it's def definitely a good looking game for sure. Uh, what else? Uh, audio, uh, no voice acting really, uh, which is fine. Uh, uh, you know your classic Metroid sound effects that that all sound quite good. Uh, the music, the the song that I liked most was a remix from from another Metroid game in the Torvis Bog. But I thought the music was actually pretty good. I, I liked it. I don't know if I'd say it's I liked it more than the first game, but. Um, Probably not. It's probably not as good as the first game, but I thought it was good and fitting. Very, very ambient music. Ambient music that kind of just kind of creates a mood. Uh, it's not. There's some melody-based songs, but it's it's very kind of quiet, subdued music. Uh, that that really fits kind of like the atmosphere of the game. The atmosphere in the game is quite stellar overall. Um, but yeah, that 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 about covers audio. But I'm trying to think what else. I mean, that about covers it. I mean, this this review is much longer than I expected it to be, uh, considering it's, you know, it's an action-adventure game. It's not like an RPG. There's not too much to talk about here. And it's if you played Metroid Prime, you generally know what to expect. It's, it's quite similar. But, um, yeah, overall, oh, man, I mixed on it. You know, I'd probably say it's still a good game. I, I still liked it overall. I, I think... I, I, I think I enjoyed it more than I didn't, uh, basically. But uh, I, I can't deny that some of the, the some parts of this game were were frustrating as hell, and it's just it's an inferior sequel. I, I, I just it just is. Uh, I've heard some people like this the best out of the trilogy. I I mean I don't know I don't I don't see how you possibly could. Like I mean, the more demanding exploration is is maybe a little maybe a little more rewarding than in in uh, Metroid Prime, and Sanctuary Fortress, I think, is just better designed than all of the locations in, in the first game, but I don't know, I, 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 I really, I, I, I just, at the end of the day, I think this is going to probably be my least favorite of the trilogy, unless I hate the third one, which, from what I've heard, I doubt it. In fact, it very well could be my favorite of the three, but uh, I don't know when we'll get to that, but uh, certainly more Metroid games to play in the future. I still need Zero Mission to go through, but uh, yeah, uh, worth playing, I think, if you're a Metroid fan. Uh, if you're not, uh, it's probably a safe skip. Uh, definitely, if you haven't played the first one, play that one first. Uh, you don't need to have played the first one to play this. Obviously, like the story is not uh, connected or anything like that, I don't think. But uh, yeah, that's Metroid Prime 2. Overall, I like the game, but uh, highly flawed, basically. But uh, 
That's it, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.